Hi, this is Sandeep Jali and Manos Brilakis presenting case 264 for the Manual of CTO Interventions. This is a case illustrating retrograde use of the Sasuke dual lumen microcatheter through an epicardial collateral. The patient was an older gentleman who presented with exertional dyspnea. He was found to have a CTO of the right coronary artery without significant hemodynamic abnormalities on right heart catheterization, and his dyspnea was considered to be an engine equivalent. He was therefore referred for PCI of the right coronary artery CTO. The dual injection shows a CTO of the distal right coronary artery with a right posterior lateral and PD8 filling mainly through an epicardial collateral from the circumflex. There is also a blunt occlusion of the distal cap with uh, the bifurcation of the PDA and to the right posterior lateral. We did obtain the coronary CT angiogram, which was very useful. It did show that it was indeed a long occlusion with some calcification, which wasn't very severe. There was a bifurcation of the distal cap with some entry point into the distal right coronary artery. Therefore, our plan was to try first undergrade wiring, since we had a clear proximal cap. If that didn't work, then the plan was to try retrograde to the epicardial, leaving undergrade dissection and re-entry as the last resort because of the bifurcation of the distal cap. We tried with a turnpike microcatheter and a filter XTA, and we did make some progress within the occlusion, but uh, despite attempts, uh, the wire kept on knuckling within the occluded segment of the right coronary artery. So after multiple attempts, we decided to change to retrograde crossing. Uh, we did uh, engage the epicardial collateral from the circumflex with a Kerval microcatheter and a SUO3 guide wire, which is the safer one from those collaterals. And then uh, after um, gentle manipulation of the wire, we were ab able to deliver it into the right posterior lateral branch, and then it was advanced into the right PDA. You can see the big band that was successfully crossed with a Caravel microcatheter. However, the problem now was that despite delivering the Caravel, we had a lot of pistoning movement, back and forth movement, from this Caravel microcatheter, which is not very supportive, and that did not allow us to puncture retrogradely into the distal right coronary artery. So how to approach this problem? There have been some reports in which uh, a dual lumen microcatheter, like the Sasuke, could be delivered through collaterals, both septal and epicardial. In this case, this was a relatively large epicardial, and we were able to deliver a Sasuke dual lumen all the way to the distal cap over the guide wire advanced into the PDA. And after doing that, we now had much more support to advance a retrograde Gaia next 2 trying to puncture into the distal right coronary artery. And indeed, after multiple attempts, we were able to advance the guide wire retrogradely using the undergrade knuckled wire as a marker of where the lumen was going to be. So eventually we were able to advance the Gaia wire into the extra plug space, advance, uh, then switch it for a single lumen microcatheter, and then we were able to get to the distal right coronary artery. We then delivered an undergrade guide liner coast and did a guide extension reverse cart with a 3.0 millimeter balloon successfully entering into the undergrade guide catheter. We externalized and then used the same Sasuke dual loop microcatheter to wire the posterior descending artery as well as the right uh, posterior lateral. So now we had undergrade wires in every vessel. We predilated and that restored some undergrade flow. And then uh, we uh, removed uh, the retrograde gear. And that's very important. You don't want to jail a equipment. So remove the retrograde gear and then stand it all the way from the PDA all the way to the ostium of the right coronary artery. We then tried to post dilate, which was challenging because the stand had a hard time delivering. And in cases like this, it is more of a back and forth woodpeckering movement, trying to get the stand uh, through that uh, previously placed uh, stand. And by doing that back and forth movement, rapid succession, we were able to eventually um, advance the stand uh, further down and then uh, deliver it and cover the remaining part of the right coronary artery. 
We postulate it and got a nice result. Timothy flow into the PDA, Timothy flow into the right posterior lateral. However, there was a significant lesion in the posterior lateral that was not seen well before. So what we did is um, we uh, removed, uh, first of all, the retrograde microcaster, confirmed that there was no injury in the epicardial collateral. And uh, after doing that, we stented the right posterior lateral with 275 by 15 millimeter stand, and that gave a nice result flow restored in all branches of the distal right coronary artery. So there are multiple lessons from this case. The first one is that uh, an epicardial collateral does carry an increased risk compared with septal collaterals. However, in selected cases like this one where there was no septal, the epicardial collateral can provide a good means for recanalizing a complex CTO. The second is that sometimes, especially through epicardial collaterals, if we deliver a microcatheter, especially a less supportive one, such as the uh, caravel microcatheter, there can be a lot of back and forth movement, which can be a problem. And the way to solve that is to advance either a larger single lumen microcatheter, or what we did in our case is we advanced a dual lumen microcatheter, which was successfully advanced through the epicardial collateral, and that provided good support for puncturing retrograde through the distal cap. And then finally, once we cross and prepare the lesion, we want to make sure we don't jail the retrograde wire. So the retrograde wire has to be removed before placing uh, stents across it to avoid entrapment. Thank you.